What is going on guys, it's Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the highly requested GPU overclocking guide. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to overclock your GPU in the fastest and most efficient way possible, whilst keeping it as simple and as easy to follow along with as possible. If you guys are happy with this video and you are happy with the results, please do press that like button as it helps me out a ton, and please also do share this video around with any friends or family that might find this video beneficial to them as well. And please let me know your results down in the description below after this video or during this video, as it is always fantastic to get a discussion going on there. GPU overclocking is something that so many people have heard around in the PC gaming scene, but not many people actually decide to go and dip their toes into it. The main purpose of GPU overclocking is to ensure that you're getting the most out of the hardware that you've paid for, and more often than not, there's usually around about 10-25% to extra performance sat at your fingertips in which your PC is not utilising. So any of you looking to get the most out of your hardware or for a nice and easy FPS boost which you have paid money for and which is pretty much just sat there in your system not being utilised, this is definitely the video for you. If you're looking to squeeze the very most out of your system and get every single last frame that you can possibly get, get the lowest amount of input lag, the best frame times possible and getting the best overall experience no matter whether you're going for high frame rate gaming or high resolution gaming or just general day to day tasks to ensure that you get the best performance possible. Overclocking the GPU basically consists of two parts. It's increasing the frequency to both the GPU core clock and the GPU memory clock. The higher you increase these frequencies, the faster the components within inside of the graphics card run, pretty much equaling better performance within inside of the game. If you guys are running at your factory clock, meaning that you've just installed the GPU or you just purchased your PC and you're running everything stock, you haven't gone and overclocked anything manually yourself, and if that is the case, you've usually got around about 10 to 25% extra performance just sat at your fingertips without any need to increase power draw or temperatures on the GPU itself. It's an incredibly safe process. I know there's a lot of stigma around this and some of you are probably wondering whether or not this is safe and if it costs. And the answer is it is extremely safe to do and it is also completely free. The utility in which we're going to be using to do this will not allow you to put up these values to anything dangerous. You can pretty much turn all of the bells and whistles inside of here however you wish to do so and you will not cause any damage to the GPU. You might increase the temperatures but you can simply press the reset button and it will bring everything back to how it was before. It's a very lightweight and simple to use program and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do it in the simplest, fastest and most efficient way possible with the best results. Okay, so starting off with the guide, what you guys need to go ahead and do is navigate down into the description below and follow the MSI Afterburner download link. Now this program works for pretty much any GPU out there, whether it be an AMD Radeon GPU or an Nvidia GPU, it also does not matter the manufacturer of that GPU, it doesn't matter whether or not you have an ASUS card, a reference card, a Gigabyte card, an MSI card. Another program itself is by MSI, and just to clear up any confusion, this works on pretty much every single GPU out there, not just MSI ones. Once you get onto the website, go over to the Afterburner tab, go down to the Downloads tab found here at the top, and we're then going to be downloading both Afterburner and MSI Combustor. So on the left hand side hit the download afterburner tool and then also on the right hand side select the MSI combustor tool and download that as well. It'll then bring you onto the Geeks 3D website, scroll all the way down and then go to MSI combustor 3.5.1.0 and press download and then download the MSI combustor. Once MSI afterburner and combustor have both downloaded simply go ahead and open up the afterburner zip and then run the setup utility inside. At this point in the installation, I personally like to uncheck Reva Tuner Statistics Server as we do not need that. So uncheck that from the installation and continue. Then once MSI Afterburner is installed, we're then going to be installing MSI Combustor by simply opening up the EXE we downloaded and going ahead and installing that. So once both programs are downloaded, I personally like to get both desktop items and just put them somewhere on the desktop for ease of access. And what we can start off by doing is going into MSI Afterburner, which is the overclocking utility. MSI Combustor is pretty much what we're going to be using to stress test the GPU to ensure that our overclocks are stable so you don't get any crashes whilst playing games and we get the most out of our system. So starting off with the overclocking part, we're going to be going over to MSI Afterburner. And once the program opens up, you'll be greeted with a screen like this. Now the overlays and the colors might look a little bit different in your systems as they sometimes can change depending on which version of MSI Afterburner you're running. So don't be alarmed about that. Simple overview of what you're seeing on the screen now is your core clock is found there on the left hand side and underneath that is your memory clock. On the right hand side, you will find your current GPU temperature. And inside here on the middle, you see your core voltage control, your power limit control, temporary limit control, core clock, memory clock, and fan speed controllers. Setting up Afterburner the way I like it is I like to go down into the settings tab found here in the bottom left. 
click on that. Then under general, I like to go to the general properties and start it with windows and start it minimized. This is handy for when we find our max overclocks and to make sure that they are always applied. So if you go for a system restart or it has to update or you need to re-log back into your account, it basically means that MSI Afterburner will open in the background and apply these overclocks for you. So you don't accidentally end up rebooting your system and not opening these up, which means that you won't get any of the benefits from this anyway. So it just basically goes ahead and applies those for you. So you pretty much don't have to do much thinking about this from this point onwards. And it will apply that for you to ensure that you always have the best performance possible. And then once that is set, I simply then like to go ahead and go down to OK. And then we're brought back to the main screen here. Now, starting off with finding our max GPU overclock, it is very important that we also find our max GPU fan speed in which we're comfortable with. So to do this, it will more than likely be set to auto. So simply go ahead, press the auto button to uncheck that, and then you'll find that you have full control over the fan speed. Now inside of this slider, we're going to be selecting the highest personal preference value you can go for. If you can set it to 100% and press apply, you'll notice that your fan speed then starts to ramp up, but with that, it also becomes louder. If you're happy with how loud that is and you're comfortable with how loud that is, that's absolutely fine as we will then get the best performance out of your fans and your cooling solution on your GPU. But if you find that it's too loud, we then want to simply go ahead and bump that down, keep pressing the check mark and then finding where you're most comfortable at, but keeping that number as high as possible. Because I'm recording a video, I'm personally going to be going down to around about 55% to ensure that the microphone does not pick it up. So I'm going to be going with a max fan speed of 55%. But for you, you want to set your overall fan speed, which you want to be using. You can also just leave this option on auto but you will not be getting the best performance out of your fans as they will rarely go up this high but for me i personally like to get the best out of my cooling solution keeping that gpu running cool so i'm going to be applying 55 percent and pressing the check mark another thing we can do at this point is go to the power limit and temperature limit and max those out basically means that the gpu can run more power efficiently especially if you're getting into any high demanding areas in any games or you might be experiencing some stuttering you'll find that is less likely with the power limit being increased and the temperature limit basically means that the gpu will start throttling itself at 92 degrees now rather than what it did stock. You should never be getting to temperatures this high anyway unless there is something severely wrong with inside of your PC, so that's absolutely fine. So with that set, what we then simply want to go ahead and do is press that check mark again to apply that. And what I also then like to go ahead and do is ensure that MSI Afterburner opens up and applies these overclocks with the startup by pressing this little button here and ensuring that it then is highlighted red. Okay, so once all of those settings are then applied, we can then simply open up MSI Combustor to make sure that starts running. And then we can go ahead and find our max stable GPU overclock. So simply press the big K button found here at the top of MSI Afterburner, which will open up the Combustor program automatically. If the MSI Combustor program does not open up automatically, simply launch it from the desktop. So now at this point, this is going to be stress testing your GPU, ensuring that it's completely stable. Now, once we start overclocking our GPU, we want to be keeping a close eye here on the left hand side for any flickering any graphical issues, any color flickering, anything like that, or it might also just completely crash the display driver. Now, if any of these things start happening, even if it just be some color flickering, it basically means that you've found your maximum GPU overclock and we want to start dialing it down from there because that's where your GPU doesn't really like running anymore. That's nothing to be alarmed by. That's absolutely fine. It's part of the process of finding what your max GPU overclock is. We just want to keep pushing this further and further until we find any of those issues and then slightly bring it down a little bit until it's completely stable and no issues are appearing. And that's when we found our max GPU overclock. Now, GPU overclocking consists of two parts. It is the core clock overclock and the memory clock overclock. This is pretty much just an indication of how fast the GPU itself is running and the memory that the GPU has access to, how fast that is running. So my personal method of overclocking is finding out what our max core clock is first. And to do this, we're then going to be increasing core clock at 40 at a time. I'm gonna keep going up and up and up until we start finding any of those issues. If the screen goes black and the graphics card driver crashes, that's absolutely fine. It will just reset itself. It might take a couple of seconds, but don't be alarmed. It's all part of the process and it is completely normal to happen. So what I'm going to do is start off the overclocking process and we're going to be adding in a core clock value of plus 40. To do this, go ahead, go to the plus zero button found here and type in the value of 40, press enter, and then press the check button to apply that. It will then be applied. Keep an eye on MSI Combustor. Let it run for around about a minute with that value. If you don't see any graphical issues and it doesn't crash, that's absolutely fine. And that is a clear indication of that overclock value is stable. So now at this point, I'm pretty confident that the overclock value of 40 is absolutely fine. So I'm going to be bumping this up by an additional 40 and going with 80 and pressing apply. And again, the core value of 80 seems to be completely stable. I haven't noticed any flickering, any crashing or anything like that or any graphical issues. So we're going to be then bumping this up by an additional 40 up to 120 and pressing enter and apply. 
Now, just to state at this point in the video, the majority of you watching this video will not even be able to achieve an additional 120 in your core clock. I've pretty much lucked out on the GPU I've got and it overclocks very, very well. Every GPU is different. You could have the exact same model GPU as a friend of yours and theirs might overclock better or worse than yours. It's pretty much all down to the GPU lottery and there's pretty much nothing you can do to control that. So don't be alarmed whether or not you can only apply 50 or 60 or you might even be able to go higher than this. Every GPU is different and this video is about finding the max for your specific GPU. So again, don't be alarmed if you can't reach these numbers as your max number might be completely different. My old GPU only managed an additional 90 on the core clock before it became unstable. So it's just about trial and error and seeing what you can and can't get away with. That being said, the core value of 120 seems to be absolutely fine for me. So I'm going to be adding an additional 40 to that, running at 160, applying that. Now the core value of 160 also seems to be stable. Now the majority of you people will not be able to achieve this core clock. So I'm gonna be bumping this up by an additional 40 all the way up to 200 and seeing if that's stable. But if you can't reach values this high, that's absolutely fine as we're then going to be fine tuning and finding what our max is, no matter whether it be 40 all the way up to 300. Going to be trying out 280. And as you can see, instantly we've got graphical issues all over the place and MSI Combustor has crashed. So simply press close program. And there we have it. That's where I've experienced my first crash. So my GPU pretty much maxed out at around about 280 and that's when things became unstable. So somewhere between 240 and 280, I will find my max clock. Your GPU driver will automatically reset itself back to default, which is what happens when your screen goes black and it flickers for a couple of seconds and it resets. And you'll more than likely find that your fan speed has gone all the way down and your system has gone quiet. That's absolutely fine. It just means that the GPU is running the default values within the driver. So we're simply then going to be going back to our max stable overclock, which was 240. And then going to be applying the fan speed back to where we wish to do so. So for me, I'm going to be going around 60% and pressing apply. Now this might not apply it straight away. The best indication of resetting your graphics card driver manually is filling with the fan speed. And once you hear the fan speed start ramping up, that means that the overclocks are starting to apply again. And then you can just simply put the fan speed back. Okay, so now that I have reached my max stable overclock and things have become unstable pretty much instantly and MSI Combustor crashed on me pretty much instantly, it means that my GPU cannot run 280. So once you find this value, what we want to do is we want to go back to the previous value that worked. So for me, that was 240. For you, it might be different, but go back to the previous value that worked before that one and apply that. What I like to do is I make sure that I apply it twice. So I'll type it in again, press enter and press the OK button again. And the reason I do this is just because MSI Afterburner sometimes after a GPU driver crash doesn't actually apply overclock straight away. So what I like to go ahead and do is to just put the value in again and press the check button again to ensure that the overclock has been applied. Seeming that 240 was stable and 280 was unstable, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to 240 and add around about 10 megahertz on top of that. So I'm gonna be going with a value of 250. And then going to be applying that and then I'm going to be opening up Combustor again by pressing the big K in the top left and seeing if that runs and seeing if it gives me any graphical issues on top of that. Okay, so after stress testing 250, it actually managed to crash out on me. So I'm going to be reverting back to around about 240, which was my last stable core clock, applying that and pressing OK. Now, moving on from there, once we have then found our max stable core clock, we're just simply going to be undercutting it to the last stable value. And then we're then going to be moving on to overclocking at the memory clock. Now, you can do bigger jumps on the memory clock and it's a lot faster to overclock as we're then going to be adding in an additional plus 100 every single time we stress test this. So we'll initially start off with 100, move that up to 200, 300, 400, 500. 500, 600, 700, and we're going to continue to jump in values of 100 until we eventually have a graphical issue or crash. Just like we did with the core clock, but we're simply going to be making bigger jumps on the memory clock. So go ahead, make sure you apply the value of 100, apply that to your GPU, then open up Combustor and stress test it for around about one to two minutes. If that then passes, simply come back into MSI Afterburner and then apply the value of 200. And then you simply wanna keep going up and up and up until you find your max stable memory clock plus 200 and make sure every single time you apply these values you press the check button found here in the bottom right hand side to apply the overclocks. So for me, I managed to get all the way up to plus 600 until I started noticing some graphical issues and it actually did manage to crash out on me. So my last stable memory clock was plus 500 on the memory clock. So we're then gonna go ahead and apply plus 500, which was my last stable clock. And then once you have found your max stable core clock and memory clock, we're simply then going to be opening up Combustor again. And we're gonna then be stress testing that for around about five to 15 minutes running on those max clocks. 
Inside of here, we're then going to be looking out for any graphical issues and any crashing. Again, this is just making sure that your max stable overclock in both the core and memory, the entire thing is completely stable. If it turns out that there are any graphical issues after a prolonged amount of time, then simply come into here and I recommend bumping down the core clock at 10 megahertz at a time. So for me, if 240 on the core and 500 crashes, I'm simply then going to be going back down to 230 on the core. And then for the memory clock, I recommend going down in values of 50. So if plus 240 and plus 500 don't work for me, I'm then going to be downgrading to plus 200. 130 on the core and then plus 450 on the memory and we're simply then going to be going down and down and down until you can run combustor for around about 5 to 15 minutes and you do not notice any graphical issues then once you find your max overclock after that mine actually managed to run completely stable on plus 240 and plus 500 what you can then simply go ahead and do is go into the bottom right hand side and then we can then save our overclock to do this go to the bottom right hand side press the save value here and then what you want to go ahead and do is save this to profile one by clicking profile one but for me i'm going to be saving it to profile three as i do have have some other settings I want to be trying out at a later point for different videos. But for you guys, make sure that you go ahead and press number one to save it to profile one. That'll ensure that every time you re-log, reboot your system, or just open up MSI after burn it, it goes ahead and automatically applies these clocks for you. So you pretty much don't have to do anything and you don't even have to think about it. Now, another thing you might notice when you're going into real world games and you start playing games for extended periods of time, you might also notice that there are some graphical issues on there. You might notice some flickering, some weird texture issues. If you do notice any of those, make sure that you come back into here and just bump your overclocks down by around about 10 on the clock again and 50 on the memory clock and see if those go away. It's all about fine tuning but once you watch this video and you've stress tested normally you more than likely won't have to come back in there and bump these down but it's all about fine tuning as once you've found these max overclocks you can jot them down or just save them to MSI after burner and then they are then set until you pretty much get rid of your graphics card whenever that is and you actually go ahead and upgrade. Seeming I just got my graphics card I'm going to be keeping it for around about two to three years from now so I've already found my max overclocks and I don't have to worry about this for the next two to three years and I'm going to be getting the max performance pretty much every day that I use this thing. And that's pretty much it guys. Guys, that is my fast and efficient guide to overclocking your GPU safely and stably, ensuring that you're getting the best performance out of the hardware you have, whether it be old hardware or brand new hardware, whether it be low end or high end, we always want to make sure that we're getting the most out of what we've paid for, keeping those frame rates and frame times high and keeping the input lag low and any lag you're experiencing in game to a minimum. If you guys want to go ahead and couple this with the RAM overclocking guides and the CPU overclocking guides to ensure that you're getting the most out of every component in your system, all three of those put together can almost equal a worthwhile upgrade without even having to spend a penny. All of this performance is pretty much at your fingertips and you don't have to do anything besides follow these guides and simply press a few buttons. Coupling those three things together, GPU overclocking, CPU overclocking and RAM overclocking, you could be seeing performance increases anywhere from 20% all the way up to 100%, doubling your frame rate in some cases. So some of you guys out there who might be debating whether or not to upgrade or you don't have the money to upgrade, you can pretty much get a completely free upgrade with the hardware that you've already paid for with performance that's pretty much sat at your fingertips in which you haven't been utilizing. Those guides will be up shortly if they are already up you can find them in the description below or you can also go around and have a look on the channel for any other guides to ensure that you guys are getting the best FPS from inside of games. It'd be really appreciated if you can take the time to check around on the channel look for any other videos especially for game specific ones and how to optimize Windows 10 itself for gaming performance to ensure that you're getting the best performance in every single aspect of your system. Again if you guys are happy with this video and you can post your results down in the comment section below let us know what you could get on the core or let us know what you can get on the memory clock and how far you managed to push that and the performance increases with inside of games as well that'll be deeply appreciated if you can share this video around that'll be deeply appreciated as well and press that like button if you did like the video and you found it useful and also feel free to use that comment section down below for any questions queries any feedback and also feel free to request any videos down there as well thank you very much for watching this video guys i am pangino and i am out